What's going on, man? It's Bad Party People. Coach Anderson here. And in this question, in this problem, we're going to be reviewing how to really stay calm, cool, and collected while you figure out what to do. Because not every question is going to be, hey, here's the formula, here's the information, plug it in. It's not always going to be that easy. So sometimes we need to kind of understand what information we have, what our goals are. That way we can stay calm, cool, and collected through the entire process. So I'll give you a chance to try this question out before I go ahead and start solving. Three, two, and one. All right, let's go ahead and start solving here. So first things first, you know, we have our three-step strategy right up here. First thing you always want to do, we want to read the question. You don't want to do anything else. You want to read the question sentence to give yourself the opportunity to understand what the goal of the problem is. When you know what the goal is, that gives you a great opportunity to know what information actually is related to it and how it's related. So our question here reads, what is the required length of material B? So cool. So we want to know the length of material B. That's it. I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what material B is. I don't care. But I at least know that my goal is to find the length of material B. We'll worry about all the information in a bit. So we'll write that down right here. And you see that your answers are written in inches. So I'll just go ahead and say material B, material B. And I'll go ahead and say equals blank inches. And there it is, just like that. So the next thing I'll do now is, hey, what information do I have? I just asked, what do I want? Which is the question itself. Now, what do I have? I know that I'm looking for material B, its length. So let's read and take note of any information that has anything to do with material B so we can see what we can do. So we'll go ahead and start reading from the beginning now. Again, all I care about is material B. Keep that in mind. So you need to buy two materials to complete a project. Okay, so there might be a material A. Material A, yeah, material A costs 21 cents per inch and you require one foot and two inches of it. Okay, so we have the price per inch and we have how much of it we need. Don't worry about saying 0.21 or one foot two, don't worry about that. Just say that we have a price per inch and we have a length. Okay, we have the total cost of materials is this much money and we know that material B cost this much per inch. Now I know that might feel a little overwhelming. So let's just take a moment, take a quick breath and understand the overarching theme here. The overarching theme is that, look, we have a total. The total cost of the materials is this much money. How do we get the total? We get the total by just saying, hey, if I'm at the store, if I buy material A and I buy material B, the total is just adding material A and material B's cost together, right? Right? Okay, so with that said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, you know, material A plus material B, that's gonna equal the total amount, which is $13.74. All right, awesome. So what's the connection? You know, how am I actually gonna get to the length of material B? Well, we need to understand is this little very intuitive, you know, very easy to understand principle and it's that if we have a cost per inch and we have the number of inches, we multiply those together to get the cost of either of materials. So for material A, we see the material A costs 21 cents per inch and you need one foot and two inches of it. So what we'll do is we'll multiply the 21 cents by whatever this is and we'll get the cost of material A. Why does that help us? Because if we're trying to find the length of material B or anything about material B, we see that it's not by itself on this equation. B doesn't equal 1374. A and B together makes 1374. So we can get rid of A first by calculating A, but we can get rid of A so we can just talk about B. That's why I'm gonna focus on A for a brief moment. So again, we know that if we're looking at material A, I highlight that in green, we have 21 cents per inch, one foot, two inches of it. We can go ahead and actually multiply first by converting the one foot into 12 inches. So we'll go ahead and do this. We'll say, hey, for material A, and I'll erase this in a bit to keep this nice and neat, but we have 21 cents multiplied by one foot, two inches. Again, one foot is 12 inches, and we still have the two inches, so that's 14 inches. So what we're really doing is 21 cents multiplied by 14 inches. We'll proceed now and multiply. So we'll go ahead and go over here. And to multiply, what we're gonna do, as always, is we're gonna ignore the decimal and then just bring it back at the end. So we have one times four, two times four, then we'll go to the next row, and we have one times one, 
two times one, add these together, we get four, nine, and two, boom. And then we bring the decimals back, one, two, one, two. So this equals here, this is a cost for material A of $2.94, just like that. So again, this is super useful. So go ahead and pause here if you wanna go ahead and you know just write that all down. I'm gonna erase it to keep the problem going. So I'm gonna take all of this so over here and say goodbye. Again, all we've done so far, all we've done was we calculated the cost of material A. The reason that that's useful is because now that we're looking at material B, or trying to get material B, we can go ahead and subtract the 294 from both sides. We can subtract that. So if we subtract 294 right over here, and on the other side, again, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So once we do that, we see that we'll cancel out on the left, leaving us with the cost of material B. The total cost of B is going to be, and we'll subtract here, that'll be zero. We'll have to borrow here. So then we have 17 minus nine, which is eight. Then we have uh, 12 minus two, which is 10. So we have the cost of material B is $10.80. Now this is extremely useful because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna notice that we were given the cost of B. We're told that material B is $1.20 per inch. So since material B is $1.20 per inch and our total cost is $10.80, what we can do is we can divide. We have the total cost of B, 1080. We divide that by $1.20. If we do that, we'll see how many inches because it's $1.20 per inch. Booyah. So we're good to go now because we know that right over here, we can go ahead and write this in purple. We can say that $1.20 times the inches for B, that's going to give us 1080. So we divide both sides by 120. And once we do that, we'll get our answer. So I'll do that right here above my big old head and we're good. So we'll say... Uh, 120 into 1080 and one little trick that we could use is since we don't want to divide by a decimal I'll zoom into this one a little more. I don't really want to divide by a decimal So what I can do is I can move each decimal over by the same distance I move it over once in the bottom once in the top That's the same thing as multiplying by 10 on top and bottom again moving a decimal to the right You are basically multiplying by 10. So with that we are essentially saying this is the same as 108 divided by 12 and that's actually a lot easier to look at. 108 divided by 12, that's nine. And so there we are. This is gonna equal nine, and we were looking at the length in inches. So material B is nine inches. And there we are. The correct answer for this question here is answer choice A. If you saw this in a uh, recent class that we uh, just hosted, then I hope that you got this right. But if you didn't, remember, what we always wanna look to do is understand our mistakes. So whether you got this right or got this wrong, remember that what we're trying to do is get better every single day. So my party people, if you enjoyed this question, if you enjoyed the solution, all I ask is that you comment below, subscribe to the channel, and leave a like. That way the YouTube gods can help us out. So with that seven math party people, as always, I'm here to help you succeed. I'm Coach Anderson, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.